Welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. The three keys to your success is just moments away. Here's your host, Brian Kelly. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. I'm so excited to have you all here tonight. This is going to be an amazing, amazing show. We have an amazing young woman by the name of Julie B. Got to know her before the show, before we went live. And I will tell you, I am duly impressed with this young woman. She has accomplished a lot. And she is the entrepreneur's entrepreneur. And she is going to provide so much value for you. That's what I love about this show. I love what I get to do. And that is to provide value for you. And it comes at no cost. And you cannot get some of the information we talk about on this show at any seminar, boot camp, or course online. It just, this is... This is rare. This is golden information that you are going to be privy to here in just a moment. We'll bring her on the mind body business show. What is that all about? Well, in my now 55 years on this planet, I spent the last decade or so actually studying just those people that were successful. And what I noticed over time, and that's people I know in person, that's people I've met at seminars, and it's also people who have authored books. And what I've noticed is patterns had developed of these individuals, why they were so successful. And it came up in the form of three different pillars. And you might already have guessed what those might be. Yes, mind, me, that means mindset. So each and every successful individual had a very powerful, empowered, and flexible mindset. And then body, to a person, all of them took care of themselves, both nutritionally and through exercise, regular exercise, doesn't mean every single day, uh, just to let you off the hook, but do it on a regular basis and your body will be operating at peak performance. And then there's business. Business is multi, multi-faceted. There are so many things that go into business, the skills that are required to run a successful business, like sales, marketing, team building, leadership, the list goes on and on. The good news with that for those that had mastered it, those that were highly successful, wasn't necessarily that they themselves individually mastered all those skill sets. They mastered one main skill set that helped them to reach a broader base. And that was the skill set of leadership so that they could scale their business and hire the right people that had those skill sets that they could nurture and improve on. And so that's what this show is all about. It's a show for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. And another very, very incredible quality of highly successful people is to a person, they seem to be very, very avid readers. And with that, I'd like to segue very briefly over to a segment I affectionately call Bookmarks. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Yes, there you see it, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And by the way, for those of you watching and listening right now, do yourself a favor and take out something that you may have not seen in a while. And that is called a good old fashioned piece of paper and a pen. (laughs) And why do I say that? That is so you will resist the temptation of going and looking at different resources, websites, things, you know, stay off Google, stay with us because here's the thing. This is what I've learned over my years of speaking from stage. And that is that the magic happens in the room. Now I get it. This is a virtual room. As long as you're staying with your focus and your attention on this show, then the odds of you missing any nuggets is greatly reduced. So be sure to stick with us. Do take notes, please do. I, as the host, take notes, a lot of notes very during every show. You should do the same. And so reachyourpeaklibrary.com is one example of that. Just write down the URL. And what that is, is it's a library of books that I personally have read and mostly uh, through something called Audible. I listen to the audio version of the books. That is my mode, my favorite mode of ingesting information and reading. And what this is, is around 40 books or so that I have read and personally vetted for you. So that if you have not started on your journey of reading yet, this is a great resource to go to and literally just pick the first one that jumps out to you, the first one that talks to you. There's a little description with each one. There's no need to analyze every single one of them. Just get started. And if you're one of those that's already an avid reader, then go ahead and pick one you have not read yet 
Uh, and that's what we do on this show as well. We, we get some great recommendations of new books. Uh, I The second I get off the show with a, a host such as Julie, if she recommends a book, I'm, I'm purchasing it on Audible instantly, taking action. And so I recommend you do the same as we go forward. Speaking of Julie, you know what? Enough of Brian. We want to get the star on the show. So let's bring her on right now, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it Hello. is. The one, the only, Julie B. Yes, in the house. <laughs> hey, Julie, before I formally bring you on, I want to really quickly remind the audience, for those who are watching live, that stay on to the end. And you'll have a chance at winning a five-night stay at a five-star Mexican resort. All compliments of our wonderful sponsors at powertexting.com. For those of you watching, you can see their logo on the upper right. And it's an amazing trip. I will tell you, it's not one of those where you get snared into a timeshare presentation when you go. In fact, I know that because the owners of powertexting.com have gone on these trips themselves, not once, but three times, and said, they were treated no different than a full paying customer. And so they're phenomenal trips. We give one away every single show. And that's enough about that. We'll bring that up later. We'll show you exactly how you can enter to win. So stick with us to the end. Let's bring on this amazing young lady by formally introducing her. This young lady's name, as you can see on the screen, is Julie B. And she is the founder of Be Smart Social Media, an agency located in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was founded in 2010, and BeSmart has since served over 250 businesses around the world. That's pretty impressive. In her free time, Julie volunteers as the chairwoman of Matthew's Alive Festival and is an avid stand-up paddleboarder. That's pretty fun. Loves college football and enjoys anything related to Harry Potter. I love it. Now, formally, welcome to the show, Julie B. How are you doing this evening? I am doing great, Ryan. Thank you uh, so much for having me on tonight. I'm excited because uh, just getting to know you for the brief amount of time we had, I am duly impressed. And I know that the audience is going to love you. We're going to get a lot of value tonight. And that's what we're all about is, is giving you the value. And so go ahead and let us know if you're watching. Tell us where you're from. Put it in the comments. This is an interactive show for those of you that would like to Give a shout out to Julie if you know her. If you don't know her, if you don't know me, it doesn't matter. Just say hi. Tell us where you're from. Ask questions along the way. We would love that. So, Julie, we did a very quick, very quick uh, description of your past accolades and your company, Be Smart Social Media. And we're definitely going to dig deeper into that. I promise you. I promise everyone. Because social media is a powerful, powerful platform by which to market one's business and get the word out. Uh, what I'd like to do first is take a step back and actually go deeper into the mind and specifically yours, that big, beautiful brain of yours, and find out what it is that makes Julie so successful, that makes Julie and her company and her culture and everything that follows such a successful entity. And by that, so as an entrepreneur, we all face challenges, don't we? Uh, it's it's not a rose petaled lined path every single day. In fact, oftentimes it is quite the opposite. And for you, Julie, like when you get up, uh, I, I know myself, if when I, when I rise up and I swing my feet over the edge of the bed, I'm still not completely there. I'm kind of cobwebbed and coming to some people get up right away. But when I start coming to, I realize the day is ahead. And for you, when that comes, what is it that in particular and specifically that motivates you, that drives you, that says, yes, another day I get to go help more people? What is it for you? Well, I mean, you, you just actually said it. Um, I, I really have a couple of uh, motivating factors internally for me. Freedom of schedule is really one of my biggest motivators. And there's a lot behind that. But that is a big piece of what gets me up in the morning and just to be able to have freedom of schedule. And making a positive impact on other people is also really, really important to me. So, you know, that's kind of my internal motivation. And then externally, small business owners, I mean, I love working with small business owners. I love my clients. 
and they motivate me. My employees motivate me and, and my family does as well. So that's fantastic because what that tells me is you have the mindset part down pretty well where your, your focus is on other people to serve people, to help people and to grow your business so you can even continue to do more. And it, you have to have a rock solid mindset in this business, in the business of entrepreneurship, I should say, not in the business of social media marketing by mm -hmm. itself, just in general to survive, <laughs> let alone to thrive. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I love what I get to do is interview amazing people like you with that wonderful, beautiful mindset. And also I know we found out just by introducing you that you're an avid paddleboarder, which mm -hmm. in its own right is quite a workout. So we can tell you also take care of yourself mm -hmm. and that's obvious and phenomenal. And then there's business. And so the thing about business is, like I said in the beginning, it takes a lot of different skill sets to achieve success, not just achieve, but then maintain, because sometimes maintaining and growing is often harder than getting there to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so if you were to actually think of just three, if you could just think of three that were the absolute top skills needed currently that you can think of uh, to be a successful entrepreneur, what would those be for you? Yes. So I, it's, for me, it's not so much skills as it is characteristics. Um, and I've, I have talked with my friends about this and other business owners about this quite a bit, but it boils down for me to what I call the three R's, which are resilient, resourceful, and relentless. I think that successful entrepreneurs have to have those three characteristics and you've got to be resilient. You know, you are going to get beaten up a little bit in business, sometimes a lot. I mean, there, you know, I have some, some failures that were really hard to come back for, but you have to be able to be resilient from those and you have to be resourceful as well. You have to be able to figure out different ways to solve problems when, you know, you've got limited budget or limited resources or just limited time. And then, you know, being relentless in your pursuit of whatever your goals are, whatever you want to achieve and whatever success is to you. I think those those three characteristics are what really help an entrepreneur be successful. Uh, that, you know, I can't agree more. That sounds like right down the alley of all of the things that I've noticed with successful entrepreneurs and, you know, relentless, of course, must be relentless. <laughs> uh, and the reason is, you know, like we were saying, it's not as simple as a lot of people that have not gone down this path yet think it is. And when they start down this path and they're excited, uh, that excitement quickly rubs off and then they begin questioning and oftentimes stop. And that's because the, the resilience wasn't there. Maybe their why, their reason for doing it wasn't strong enough. Maybe what they chose to do the first time wasn't something they truly were passionate about. You know, a lot of times I see people that just dive after anything that will result in making them money, regardless of how they get that money. Um, and not to say anything negative about any industry. One of those I can think of is real estate. It's, um, you know, in certain forms, you're only there to serve yourself and make money. Uh, you are helping move properties, but it's a different kind of thing. And so if real estate, I've seen a lot of successful entrepreneurs do after the fact, or they would then move into service based uh, businesses as well as continuing with real estate. But all, you know, all told being a, a service based entrepreneur, is usually the most successful that I've seen. I've interviewed quite a few on this show and, and the shows prior to this, uh, when I used to interview other, other folks. And that was always a common trait of the successful people where they love to help people. Like you mm -hmm. said in the onset is, um, that was one of the big things, resilience. Yeah, that's right there with it. And being resourceful, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge because again, everything doesn't happen as we plan. And to figure out on the fly, how to make something work that didn't work as planned is a skill in its own right and totally agree those are great the three r's so that's a very good way to remember it i'm looking at my sheet because i told you i was writing notes i'm telling all the audience members <laughs> yeah i see that i am a product of the product i'm not going to tell you to do something that i don't do so that's <laughs> cool um one of the things i'm always curious about so i know uh through talking to just before we came on that you do have a team you have employees that work with you uh and one of the things uh you know i have a team as well and it's interesting going through the process of finding the right people that really are 
in it for similar reasons that you are as far as the culture, why you're doing it, who you're serving. How do you personally go about finding those people for your organization who, who truly care about, you know, the organization the way you do, or at least as close to as possible? So I'm a marketing person, so you're going to get a marketing answer, right? <laughs> um, I, I think that you, you have to market to your employees like you would, you, you'd have to put the same effort into that as you put into marketing to your potential clients. So you want to talk about what makes your business special. You want to talk about, for us, for example, we're really into social missions and purpose-led businesses. So we talk about that in our marketing and on our social media. And you want to talk about your core values and, and things like that so that you're not necessarily having to go out and search for people. You're attracting the right type of employee to you. And I think that that's really important to do um, when you have a strong culture and you want to continue building a strong culture. And then, you know, you have to talk proudly talk about your values. Don't shy away from your values. You, mm -hmm. If you have a competitive internal culture, talk about that because you're going to you're going to attract the right type of person. If you have a fun culture, you want to talk about that. Um, those are just things that I think that's how you really attract people into your organization that are going to care as much as you do about the business. Yeah, absolutely. Culture is so important and not everybody seems to realize that that is in business, right? It's a, yeah. it's often a missed, uh, a missed thing where, if you don't get the right people that are not in alignment with your culture, with your values, you know, that's another way to put it, then the odds of them sticking around very long are slim and the odds of them producing very well while they're with you are also slim. And I found this out just by, you know, going through multiple members of the team and um, learning as I went. And it's another skill that I think is incredibly, it should be very high on everyone's list, whether you've just started out and you're a solopreneur immediately in my humble opinion immediately start learning about leadership skills like julie has done uh you you recently went to a very advanced type of leadership training for three months so the thing i love about julie is she is a product of the product she goes after it she does whatever is necessary to get her business to the level she wants and then when she gets it there it's up to the next level from there and it doesn't just help her it helps her team and every client she interacts with. And she's about the big picture. And that's why she's on this show uh, representing her wonderful company, which I really want to talk more about right now. It's a Be Smart social media. It's uh, It sounds amazing. And I wanted to ask you so that others could understand what is, and, and this is what I ask every person I talk to that is a business owner, who is your ideal client? What is the client base you're looking for? Because for me, when I ask that question, I may have resources for them. I may be able to connect Julie, for instance, with someone I know that could use her services. I don't ask her just because I want to, I can't wait for this to turn around and say, okay, what is it about my business you want to know? That's where I see so many people do. I truly want to know so I can connect her. So with you, uh, Julie, who would you say is your ideal client right now? Yeah, so we are wanting to work with consumer product, e-commerce brands, that have some type of social mission um, that could be an eco-friendly mission. It can be uh, working with children, funding certain types of nonprofits or charities, just something that is beyond, you know, just the bottom line. And that is, uh, we are very purpose led at Be Smart, And that is a value that aligns with, with us. And so we want to work with uh, companies that, that align with us and our values. Fantastic. And what exactly are some of the things you do for a business that comes on? Now you find the business that fits your ideal client. Um, what, what is a good example? I'm sure there's variations, <laughs> yeah. uh, but what would be a, like a typical or, or maybe a more, I don't I don't even know if this is a good question to ask because I don't know if there are any that are similar, but give us an example of uh, something. You don't have to name the company if you don't need or don't want to, but What's an example of a client? What do they do and what did you do for them? Maybe a success story. That would be good. Yeah. So actually I have a great one that just came through today for one of our clients. So we have a, one of our clients sells uh, there. They are in all natural, sustainable uh, men's grooming care uh, mm. line of products. That's it's totally e-commerce. 
And they came on and we, we did strategy for them, specifically content strategy for social media postings and hashtags and things like that. But the, the thing that we're really working on for them is influencer marketing and PR. And those two things, those two types of services are kind of blending together and it's a lot of it's happening on social media. So it really aligns with uh, the services that we were already offering. And so we just found out today that they have, we've secured a, uh, a spot for them with um, a discovery channel host of a TV show. So I can't say any more than that, but um, we are, we're working out the details of what that actually looks like but they are going to be working with a host of one of the uh, shows on the discovery channel. Wow. Yeah. So we're phenomenal. really excited about that. And uh, I can't wait to actually have the case study and be able to release that out there everywhere. But yeah, that is a, that's an example of the type of work we're doing. So this is major league we're talking with here, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, <laughs> and I'm talking about you and your company, Julia, this is amazing that, you know, after 10 years, you, you continue to scale your business. You're in, you're continually going through education, helping to raise the bar for yourself. And I can only imagine you're probably doing the same for all those who work with you on your team. Uh, you seem to have the understanding of what it takes to really grow a business. And that's why it's so cool to have you on the show uh, for so many other reasons beyond that. Um, what would you say is, you know, is do you think it's important to have good employees <laughs> um, on your business and how important is it to your success to have, you know, those employees that really get it and that actually um, will go to the mat for the company. So I'll just put this, I'll just put this out there. I ran this business as a solopreneur and with a few subcontractors here and there for, about seven years and we just kind of, I just kind of like hung out where I was comfortable. And part of that was I was figuring out, you know, what I wanted to actually do when I grew up. Um, but then I hired my first employee and, and shortly after that I hired my second employee and having a, a great team and a great staff in place that takes care of, takes care of the clients, takes care of the daily type of work that has to get done to serve the clients so that we can make the money. Um, it's, it's crucial because that gives me the time to do things like identify a new target audience or identify new services like influencer marketing and PR and go to programs like the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business program. Without my employees, I wouldn't be able to do that. And those are the things that help help us together kind of take take things to the next level and continue to innovate, continue to offer new services and, and do things better for our clients. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It was, it's kind of like uh, one of those aha moments when you first get help. I remember it vividly, uh, how my whole mind shifted. The second I realized, wait a minute, I don't have to do all this on my own. I don't have to sit, I can do more than I'm doing now, but I don't have to do it. And I was like, just ear to ear smiling thinking, oh my goodness. And so, I can recall back to times where I had to actually say no to people because I didn't have the bandwidth to do it myself. And now I realized I can do it. And just like you said, you know, you start out, you did it for seven years. You're trying to find your way. You're no different than me, than every other entrepreneur I've ever spoken to. Uh, the key is to start out and, and then to keep moving. And then uh, it was just interesting that once I got help, the light bulb went on and I realized that I could do what I truly, truly love to do and realized that my core competency was not in the business I first started with. And I'm now doing something completely different only because I got help. And that's why I bring all that up and blab so long about it because it, go ahead, you have a thought. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just going to say, like, I think there's a lot of stigma around hiring. I remember when I was thinking about hiring so many other business owners who had employees would tell me like, don't hire until you absolutely <laughs> have to. And looking back now, I, that was, that slowed me down. I could have, we could have grown a lot faster if I had hired sooner. Um, and I could have hired sooner, but I had this fear about hiring. And I think that, you know, if you, if you, if you know what your culture is and you know what, know the job description that you're hiring for, and you have some systems in place around that specific description, 
yeah. you're going to be okay. You know, you're, you're going to probably make a good hire and, and, and be able to do more than you were ever able to do. So I, you know, I don't, I, I kind of get the fear around hiring, but I also think that sometimes you just have to, you just need to hire sooner than, than maybe other people are saying that you should. <laughs> I totally agree with that. And I, what I found just through raw experience was the importance of having a system to onboard new hires. And basically it's there to filter and vet them prior to even taking my personal time to talk to them on an interview or having a manager do the same. It's because you can set it up. And I, I, I just ended up building an entire system that it consists of over 50, five, zero minutes of videos that each applicant must go through. And it's not, it's not one video. It's about 10. Uh, they go through and then they have to answer a question at the end of each one. And then at the end, this is what I got from another guest that came on this show. This is why I love what I get to do, who said this was the holy grail of it all, that he and their company, they require that every applicant send them a personalized video of themselves explaining why they are the right fit for this company. I'm like, wow. And I began doing that. And I will not consider talking to an applicant until I see that video come through. And it has filtered out a lot of people that uh, otherwise might have brought the company down a little bit because I did go through some bad uh, hires, if you will. And uh, they, now because of the system that's in place, I don't have any fear about bringing on new people. I can't wait for the next person because my system is doing a phenomenal job and I don't have to lift a finger. Once I built the system, it's all in place. And I just take them through a, an online Q and a and what they go through this whole automated process. So it's been a godsend and you're right. Uh, sooner rather than later uh, is my opinion as well. Hello, Eliza. We have some people coming on Facebook. We also have some folks from LinkedIn, Gianna Brown and Russell Allen. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, if you come on, be sure to say hi, let us know, drop us a line. We love to see interaction questions. We're talking with Julie B. She is an amazing, amazing, successful entrepreneur at Be Smart Social Media. Be sure, no pun intended, I just realized I said be sure, <laughs> be sure to connect with her. You know, she has a website, Be Smart Social Media. We'll bring that up here in just a moment uh, so that people can learn how to connect with you. Uh, the best. And, you know, if they connect with you directly, is it someone in your team that they talk to? Whatever the case may be, uh, they can also get you on Facebook through your Facebook page. We put that on the screen as well. Uh, the, the key for this show, one of, one of my goals, just so I'm pulling back the curtain and being transparent, is to provide exposure for the guests who come on. And I did not charge. Did you pay any money to come on, Julie? No. Mm -mm. And so that's the whole purpose of this is to basically pay it forward, if you will. Uh, but that's what that's what the, today's culture is with entrepreneurs. It's not one of scarcity. It's one of abundance. And even if you were in the exact same field as me, Julie, I would still be raising you to the rooftops because not everyone's going to connect with me like they would with you. And so why even worry about it? There's a plenty of people to go around on this planet. And I just love being able to help others. Um, and so, yeah, Eliza is from the Philippines, by the way. She is an amazing young woman who uh, I know personally, actually, uh, she was one of my team members some time ago. And she's just uh, what she's going through, what she's gone through uh, to be where she's at is amazing. So thanks for coming on, Eliza. It's very cool that you came on from the Philippines worldwide. <laughs> hey, <Eliza. laughs> yes. Awesome. So there's so much I want to talk about. Paddleboarding would be one of them, but I'm not going to. We won't go down that path. That was fun to to discuss it's just i've never done it and it looks so fun um but i wanted to keep it uh pretty much centered on entrepreneurship success and you know i guess it's important right paddleboarding is actually a good topic because what does that do for you individually when you take the time to leave your house your business mm -hmm. and actually go outdoors and be with nature does that does that help you a lot yes it does i i am a water baby. I love the ocean, rivers, lakes, all of that. I always have. And so, you know, getting on the paddle board and just head, heading out and just being out in the lake, you get to see all kinds of wildlife. Um, you just get to be, you just get to be one with nature and just kind of sit there on your board if you want to. And yes, I do sit on my board a lot. So uh, I, I meditate on the board. Sometimes I do a little bit of yoga on the board. Um, 
and it's, it's kind of this really beautiful experience of exercise and stress relief and also just being in nature. And so it, it kind of hits all of those, those pieces of um, relaxing that I, I really enjoy. And it's, it helps me come back to the business more refreshed and with, sometimes I have my best ideas out on, on my paddleboard. So it's, it's, it's very, it's a very much so needed thing I think in my life and then, you know, exercise and getting away from your business, very important for every entrepreneur. How, how do you write down those, those ideas on your board? Do you have like a wax pen or something when you, when they, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I take my phone out with me. I just, wow. I, I'll have my, I'll like text it in and I like put my phone back in my waterproof bag. So <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I was just about to say, there's somebody who never falls off her board uh, to take <laughs> yeah. her phone out there. Wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah, it's it's very important to hit that reset button, and I'm glad you uh, ha um, expanded on that because you know I know if you're anything like me, you start getting into it and you you love what you do so much that sometimes you forget to kind of take a break, and they're so needed. And there are times when that's happened where I just realized, my God, I really was pretty darned exhausted. I needed this break. Didn't even realize it because you get just so into the, mm -hmm. the momentum of it. And it's very important. And in fact, interesting, uh, wife, my wife and I just, we went on a cruise several months ago on the east coast of uh, the United States. And it was great. We've never really hit a bunch of the eastern parts of the country with Boston included. And we'd have stops, go see the Green Monster out at the at Fenway Park. It was awesome. Uh, saw a lot of great stuff. But I remember it was a 10 day cruise. And by about day seven, I was ready to come back. I'm done. I've had enough. I'm I've, my resets over. It's time to come back. I wanted to I couldn't wait to get back and get doing this show again and everything else that goes along with the business. It just was calling me out. And those are the moments where I realized and hopefully you have these moments as well, both you, Julie and everyone watching. That's when you realize you're, you're in the right place at, the, at this time. You know, if you love it that much and you can't wait and you want to leave a cruise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you're if you're on your if you're on the beach or if you're taking just taking time off and you're chomping at the bit to get back to work, then, you know, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good sign anyway. And, and hopefully, you know, you're also providing for your family and, um, you know, financially as well during that whole thing, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in fact, we're about to take off on yet another cruise. And I literally said this out loud to a friend of mine. I said, I'm not actually sure I want to go. I got a lot to do. I want to do, uh, but I do want to go. In all truthfulness, it's just interesting the tug that's going, the tug of war that's going inside the brain, because yeah. it's it's that much. It's so fulfilling to do this, what we're doing right now, and then help businesses with automation. Uh, it's just fulfilling. I love it. Um, so, like we said in the beginning, entrepreneurship is super simple. I mean, all you have to do is start a business. You know get that business name, get it registered and build a website and just watch the money roll in and you just swing on your hammock with your umbrella drink and enjoy life. We all know that's how it works, right? No, not at all. <laughs> and so along with any type of venture like this, we are going to come across and experience failures along the way. They're like micro failures, not big ones, but there are failures uh, nonetheless where things didn't go the way they wanted. And the cool thing with successful people like Julie is we don't look at them that way. It's more of a opportunity to learn. And so from your point of view and from your experience, uh, Julie, what would you say had been some of your, the ones that stick out, maybe one, maybe two or three, some of those things that were kind of like setbacks that you learned from that were the most powerful in helping catapult you forward? Yeah. So there's really, there's really two, one, one happened like overnight, literally. And one was kind of a slow roll into uh, just a really bad place. So I, uh, it's probably been seven years ago now, but I had gotten into this spot where I was a workaholic and I was work, I was working like 16 hours a day. And, and part of it, I think this is a trap that a lot of entrepreneurs can fall into, especially when you're kind of just getting started or figuring things out. You're so excited about what you're doing and you just want to be in it all the time. And that can very easily become, you know, 16 hour days, working seven days a week, and you just lose, lose track of everything else. And so I, I experienced that to the point where I was 
kind of always sick. I was always sick. And then ultimately I ended up like having to have surgery for, for some things that I think were really, really stemmed from that period in my life where I was just working nonstop. Um, so that was a big one. And then the, the other one that just stands out is I lost one. There was one year where I lost um, 85% of my revenue in one day. Ugh. And it was the week before Christmas and nothing, nobody's buying marketing services <laughs> the week before mm. Christmas. I could tell you that much um, through the end of the year. So that, that was a turning point that in my business, that's when I decided to, after, after crying and after just really not knowing what I was going to do, I decided to be a business owner. And I feel like that was the turning point in business for me. Um, when I really just said, I'm going to cut all ties with my past life of being an accountant and, you know, doing that whole thing. And I'm not going to look for a job. I'm going to make this business work. And so I rebuilt the business over time. But I think that both of those lessons, what I learned is that, well, first of all, they all, so here's this, they always, you hear this all the time that when, you know, one door closes, another opens. And what I like to say back to that is, yeah, and it's, it's hell in that hallway. When you are waiting, when that one door has closed, you're waiting for that other door to open man, that is a hard place to be. But the other thing that I've learned is that there's there's always a solution. And, and that kind of goes back to what I was talking about being resilient and resourceful and relentless. And, you know, I exercised all of those, those things with the, those two failures that I had. And um, you just have to keep going. And there's, there's always a solution. And the nice thing about it now is I have a much bigger capacity to handle, you know, bigger issues that might come up. Hopefully those two won't ever come up again. But, you know, as you, as you grow in business, it doesn't get any easier. It's the, the challenges get harder. They're bigger, you know, but you have, I think what happens is you have more resources and more experience to handle them. So. You caught me writing. I've got writer's cramp. This is awesome. Um <laughs> It, I've never been so happy to have a, a hand that hurts. And those were all nuggets of gold, absolute sheer gold. And oh, that was a, what a great analogy. When when one door closes, the other one opens, but it's hell in that hallway in the meantime. Yeah. Oh, that that is phenomenal. I've never heard that before. That is pretty cool. Yeah. And the neat thing is it is oftentimes those biggest, most tragic things that actually turn us around for those that are ready to be turned around and not give up. And that's what you did. And like you were saying, you know, a lot of people think, um, you didn't say this, but some people think that, you know, the more, the more successful you get, the easier it gets. And you just said the truth, which we've talked about many times on this show. It's like, it's always, always, the challenges are continually getting harder and harder and harder. And, and, and the, the Go ahead. The bigger thing is the de the decisions that you're making, they're impacting more people. That's the other thing. You know, when you start to have employees, the decisions that you make, they're impacting your employees. They're impacting your employees' families. And so I think there, you know, there's a unique challenge in that as well. Yeah, that could add another layer of pressure mm -hmm. and self-induced. But the reason, you know, just the fact that you brought that up tells me about your heart, how you care about your team, not just yourself. Um, yeah, because now you are kind of responsible in a way, uh, in a big way, you're the leader, you know, and if the, you know, if the ship goes down, where do they point? It's never to the people that were rowing the, the oar or pulling the oars. It was the, the person in the front calling out the, you know, the, yeah. the count for rowing the captain of the ship. And so, yeah, it's a big, uh, responsibility. That's, that's, yeah, it's a great point. Great point. Because, um, but the thing is, I, I don't want people to think that it's a scary thing. I mean, sometimes you'll go through trepidation. You'll, you'll feel uh, emotions come up. It's an exciting thing because you've gotten to that point and think about the accomplishment of getting there that you have employees. That means you reached a certain level of success in order to pay other people uh, and rest on the good things and how you got there, why you got there, the values that got you there, the relentlessness the resourcefulness 
and the resilience that got you there. And then that will help pull you through as well. And, and obviously you have a very strong why, Julie, because those were two big major events in your life and in your business. Do you happen to know, is there something that you go to all the time that no matter what happens, you will crawl over broken glass for a mile for this reason to keep the business going? Do you have one of those very compelling? Yes, I can see it. All over. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's to help the underdogs win. Mm. So, Powerful. yeah, I, you know, I've certainly been an underdog and uh, my employees have been at one point or another in their lives. And most of our clients have been. So even if they don't really identify as an underdog when they become clients, they they have been. And so that's just that's that's my why is to help the underdog win. And that's what gets me through. And those hard times, that's what I go back to. Do. It's almost like uh, giving an advantage to those who have previously been disadvantaged, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least they think they have been. Uh, you're just showing them the right way, uh, a way. Mm -hmm. that's, there's no one right way. That's the thing I always uh, love to talk about, uh, Julia, is do you have mentors that you uh, really look up to that you found that they had something you desired and you just simply decided, I'm going to model what they do. I'm going to do what they do so that I can achieve their level of success or even higher. Is there anybody like that in your life that you can yeah, think of? Yeah, I have a few, a few people. Um, one is uh, Fabi Pressler. She has been my mentor kind of from the start in business, a wonderful woman, successful business owner, just amazing person. Um, I my, honestly, my mom is somebody I really look up to. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's not a business owner that she's a saint. Like I just, if I hope that, you know, people think as, as good of me or even half as good of me as they do of my mom, uh, because that's just, that would be amazing. And, uh, I, there's just been so, so many people who have been made an impact on my life. But another one is, uh, Angie Stegall. She is, um, she's just been a really helpful person who kind of helps me break through when I'm having some type of block about something in business. Uh, she is really, really good at helping me find the path that I need to need to be on through. She asks the best questions in the world. So um, she's really helped me a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then when it comes to coaching, I know you went through a three month uh, program and that's kind of in the same light of coaching, you know, learning trades and getting one on one mentorship or one to many. Uh, what do you say to people out there who might be considering bringing on a coach to help them along in their business? I, I think it's it's very valuable. I've worked with several coaches in, in my um, career being an entrepreneur, and they've all helped me in different ways, and they've all shown up at the right time for very specific things. So I think that absolutely, you know, hiring a coach is great, you know, because a lot of the times they will – you know, they help you down the road that you need to go down, but they also have resources that you may not even know about. They can help you uh, outside of what they're able to do for you in business. So I think it's really important to have those type of people in your, in your world. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I'll, oftentimes, you know, I'll, I'll, if I'm talking to another uh, friend or colleague about this, an entrepreneur, and they're resistant to getting a coach saying it's going to be costly. And then I, it's like, well, what is it going to cost you not to hire one? Because really, you know, yeah, it's going to sting at first for some people. Uh, yeah. And Eliza is correct. Success is attained through hardships in life. Oftentimes that is the case for sure. It kind of writes the ship. And so getting coaches is such a, I mean, I've had speaker coach uh, that was probably the most profound uh, individual. He's also my mentor. His name's Mel Cutler. He was just on the show last week. An amazing, amazing young man. I've got a personal friend today that I can go to any time, almost day or night, Jason Nast. Anytime I want to run an idea, bounce it off of him. I don't know how he does it, but he's always there and, and always answering me uh, as quick as possible. And I try to do as much in kind. We bounce things off of each other. And it's just, it's amazing. You must have more than just your, in my opinion, and I think you're agreeing with this, Julie, is more than just your your direct team that's working with you on a day-to-day -day basis in your business, but outside of your team, someone that can look in from the outside to help you 
maybe notice something that you didn't because you're in it, right? And yeah. they could give you that one thing that just steers you in a different path that you never even thought of that could really result in improved business, right? Yeah, I think there's there's two levels to that. There's there's the, the coach uh, person. And then there, I think it's really important to have a uh, seek out peers who are in a similar industry. Um, I have a lot of uh, peers who are in the digital marketing world that I talk to regularly. And it's, it's important to have that um, a guidance as well, because they know the industry better than your, your coach would typically know it um, because they're in there doing it every day as well, just like you are. So it, it's good to have, even if it's, you know, I've, I've talked to other social media marketing agency owners and you, you know, it's, it's good to have that to just, not not trade industry secrets, but just to have that, you know, is, are you struggling with this right now? Oh, yeah, man, that's, you know, that Facebook change that really kind of wrecked some stuff for us just to be able to have that grounding with with somebody who's in your industry, I think is really important as well. Well, you sent me down a path. Thanks for all the likes and loves on LinkedIn. Yeah, when you said uh, that Facebook change that that struck a chord with me, I'll tell you, good grief. <laughs> Wow. I mean, they change algorithms like I change socks and that's like five times a day. No, I'm kidding. Uh, not quite, but my goodness, uh, it can be frustrating. So God bless you for being in the industry you're in. And that's where I, I cannot stress enough, especially, you know, what you do is involved in the tech industry, technology. That is where a team is paramount of importance uh, to do that on your own. No way. Uh, it just, that would be next to impossible. Uh, there would be no paddle boarding for Julie if you didn't have employees that could help you with um, the day to day and the changes and the ebb and flows. Uh, it's just, yeah. So if you don't have, and I'm saying this to our viewers and listeners, if you don't have help yet, there, there are great, great ways to get help. Uh, you don't have to spend a mint. Um, if you want, I have a phenomenal resource I use. Uh, just reach out, message me, um, and I will give you the, the information. I literally am paying a little over $2 an hour for help I'm getting right now. And it's in the United States and Canada. You can choose from wherever. And so it's it's less than a, the most virtual assistance uh, from overseas by far. And so it's, it's been a godsend for me. And uh, I would be more than happy to share it with anyone who needs that information because I've been doing, I've been using this resource for over a year and Julia, again, I can't say how important it is to have that help. Um, it's amazing. Um, you've been an entrepreneur now for quite some time, over 10 years or so. You got that job, you kind of kicked it to the curb mm -hmm. and became an entrepreneur. And uh, was that a kind of a, did you steadily grow into the entrepreneurship as you were still working a full-time job a little bit, or did you just kind of like, that's it. I'm now an entrepreneur and I'm not looking back. I, I, I didn't steadily grow into my own business, but I was working for a small business and I got the, I, you know, was bit by the entrepreneurial bug working there. So I, my educational background is in accounting, which that's a whole different story, how an accountant becomes a marketing person. <laughs> uh, but I was working for a company and doing accounting, but I was also working on marketing. I was working on websites, uh, using social media and even doing some of the office management and some of the some of the HR work. So I really got a lot of experience working for that small business. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in the recession of 2008, that small business, I, you know, I basically was let go. And I just said, I'm not going to go back to being a regular accountant. And and I don't want to work for a, a big corporation. So I started a business and didn't look back. That is impressive. Uh, that's impressive. That's very impressive. And so it was kind of like feet to the fire with you. It's like, well, mm -hmm. I'm not going to make any money unless I make this work. And sometimes that is what it takes for some people, uh, for sure. That's what a motivator, right? <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell you're you're revisiting that time right now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was and, thankful for savings at that time. <laughs> uh, yeah. So thank you yeah. for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever been? Do you go to seminars, networking events, boot camps, or have you been to them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then have you ever seen anyone, I have, and you may not have, uh, I was just curious if you have, anyone on stage looking down on their subjects, talking to the, the students in the, in the sea of people and directing their attention at those that have a job at that moment. Have you ever heard anyone give advice from stage that says, well, if you wanna, if you wanna succeed, then just, you need to quit your job immediately. Have you ever heard that? I've heard, I've heard both quite yeah. honestly. So I've heard both. I, I've heard people say, dedicate, just jump in, just do it. And then, you know, I've heard, I've heard more speakers say, if you can start it on the side while you still have your job, do that because that's the safer route. So I've heard it both ways. <laughs> and I, I like to say, instead of safer, it's the responsible route. And mm -hmm. for me, I, the first time I heard it, I was in corporate and I'm like, are you kidding me? I have two kids. I have a wife. I'm going to be paying for the college soon at that time. And I'm like, you, you're, you're nuts. I can't just stop. I, and at that time I was the sole breadwinner. I'm like, what kind of advice is that? So you got to be careful. Uh, I'm just saying this to all speakers out there, not upset at anyone individually for it. It's just, I don't think they took into account varying situations that might be out there and, and be a little bit more strategic in that statement. And, um, you know, but like you said, you had savings. So that could be said from stage, you know, if you have savings socked away and you can mm -hmm. survive another year, maybe that would be the choice for you is to quit yeah. your job and concentrate for one year, a hundred percent on your business that I can take, mm -hmm. but to just blatantly and almost, almost rudely state, you know, you're not going to succeed unless you just quit your job, like blanket statement. I'm like, well, what? So it was interesting. So that was a learning experience for me so that whenever I'm on stage, which I've spoken for many a stage, I just, I know to be more strategic about those statements. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs have success building their business while they were still working at a corporate job. And I, you know, if I had had that choice, I probably would have done it that way as well. So. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not proposing that everyone do that. Uh, do what works for you, what, what mm -hmm. your situation is. You know, if you do have some savings uh, or another means of surviving while you're doing that, there's nothing like diving in 100 percent. There truly isn't. So I get yeah. that and I, I'm all for it. Just do it responsibly, especially if you have your own family and you're you're the sole breadwinner and all that good stuff. But just want to point that out. So you've been an entrepreneur now and you've, you've also worked corporate. And mm -hmm. so this question I've been dying to ask you, what would you say? Just the first thing that comes to your mind in the moment is your favorite aspect of being an entrepreneur. Having control of my time. That knowing that I am the one that owns my time is probably one of my favorite aspects. Um, that's a big one. And then getting, I would say a second, a close second is getting to just getting to work with the people that I get to work with, my employees, my clients, my, my uh, contractors and partners. I work with some really cool people that I would not get to work with probably if I was still working in corporate America. That is, wow, that's a great point. Uh, I can't tell you how many times, you know, when you're in, when you're in circles, say of other entrepreneurs, like at those seminars or networking events, for me, I feel like I've just entered into my extended family. It just feels like the right place, you know, and it's amazing. And what you just basically said is you get to choose who you work with. <laughs> it's about choice uh, yeah. and the time control of your time. I, I always use the word liberation. It liberates one to do what they want with their time. Now, granted, it's not 100 percent free time for you to do anything. <laughs> you're going to work. You're going to continue to work. You're going to continue to grow. The cool thing is you're going to enjoy it if you've chosen the right path for yourself. And if you're not on that path, don't fret it. Just keep, stay aware. Uh, Julie and I were talking about this just before the show is keep that awareness out there and listen to other people. Uh, something happened to me recently where that happened. I was in a completely different business model just less than a year ago and shifted it. I mean, big time as Julie is aware. And uh, that was all because I had very close, wonderful people basically telling me that, you know, your core competency is somewhere else. And you seem to be much happier when you're doing that. And I thought, hmm, okay, I've been doing this other thing for seven years. It's time to make that switch. And I'm, I mean, like you, Julie, it was like, it was like, bam, that day I, sh I shut down my website. Yeah. This website. I was like, I'm all in. I made the decision and I'm not going to go half in and half out. It's all forward toward the new one. And I am so happy I did that. 
And so lots to learn here. This is phenomenal. Yes, Eliza, managing one's own time, such as being flexible is one of those great perks to be an entrepreneur. No bosses, I am the boss. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Uh, oftentimes, though, it seems that the people that work with us are the bosses because we're there to serve them, uh, you know, and, yeah. it, you know, you it, it's nice to have that thought and feeling that you're in charge. But it's I mean, you make the decisions for sure. But oftentimes, uh, you know, other people are dictating what you're doing throughout the day based on events that are coming up. I was just put it that way. It's coming all the time. The message is in the middle of the night and the emails and everything. You're like, gosh, I was doing this one thing, but I really need to take care of this. So mm -hmm. there, there's some ebb and flow to it, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, I, I would consider it far more empowering and liberating than having a job for a corporation. Oh my goodness. I just noticed five minutes. Come on now. <laughs> we have been blabbing yeah. a while. This is amazing. This has so, been great. There is one question I like to end every show with, uh, mm -hmm. and I hope you didn't cheat and watch a previous show and know what that is. No, it's all right. It's a it's a really cool question. Uh, I've asked it of every individual who's been on this show, and it, it's really it's just interesting because of the answers that we've gotten in the past. And it's not deeply deeply personal. At the same time, it is very personal. <laughs> I know it's like, what is he talking about? What is this going to be? Um, uh -oh. <laughs> but before we jump into that, I almost forgot. I need to remind everyone that's watching live right now. You now have both of our permission, her and I, to pull out your phone, that, that phone where you can text with, because now is the time to enter to win that five-night vacation stay at a five-star luxury resort, compliments of powertexting.com. Here is the info. Are you ready? Take out your phone and... Bring up your messaging app and type in the phone number of 661-535-1624. And then in the little area where you would actually type in your message, just type one word and it's peak, P-E-A-K, as in reach your peak. So once again, the phone number is 661-535-1624 and just send the message of peak, P-E-A-K. You will automatically be entered. We pick a winner every single show. I love that part about it. We get to have fun. So go ahead and do that really quick. Finish up. Be done. Because the question, as I like to call it, is about to be asked. Ooh, yes. A little dramatic pause. So to alleviate any tension or anxiety, you're, you're a pro. You've, been, you, you've, hit, you've hit the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows, and you're flexible. And I'm not worried about this at all. And I know you won't be either because here's the thing. With this question, there is no such thing as a wrong answer. It's impossible, right. absolutely <laughs> impossible. You cannot answer it incorrectly. In fact, the opposite is true. The only correct answer is yours. It's going to be unique and I can't wait. So having said that, are you, uh, are you ready? I am ready and I don't know what it is. I did not watch, so I, I don't know right. what it is. <laughs> Yes, more brownie points for you. Awesome. All right, here we go. Julie B., how do you define success? Laughter, vacations, <laughs> uh, having a happy marriage, having happy employees, and, and having time with my family. So it's not about money for me. It's about those things that really aren't measurable but bring joy to my life ooh, 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 powerful i love it Here, this is man, I, I have goosebumps all over my body and the reason is is I've, you know this is we're approaching 90 shows at the time of this one and no two people have answered this the same way which blows my mind in a great way uh, because it truly is unique to every individual and the you, you the one thing you did say though that was common amongst all of them mm -hmm. was it was not about money not a single guest has said it's all about the money. Uh, one referenced it and then went on to clarify, but that's because it buys me freedom, liberation to do what I want when I want, which we already talked about. Yeah. And so none of the end game end result reasons was for the money, just for money's sake. Uh, those that are just starting out might be more in that area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like that. And mm -hmm. you probably were too, because you need money to survive. So that's your focus. 
at that time. But successful entrepreneurs, I find by and large, well, everyone to a person that's been on the show, that is not their end game. It's not money. And joy was the word that leapt, leapt out when uh, you said it at the end that mm -hmm. kind of quantified everything. Laughter, vacations, happy marriage, happy employees. And then you said joy. It's like, mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to have fun with this because uh, with your permission, I'm going to include your quote in an upcoming book yes. along with all of the others. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun putting that together. I cannot wait. But first, I'm going to put my other book out. Wow, that's a great one. Eliza is coming on just just peppering us with great comments. Yes, it's more than money. And success is having peace of mind knowing you don't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. That's a different take. Man, I love that. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And for everyone. Yes. Uh, Russell Allen was commenting on LinkedIn earlier, but I agree that people should do it responsibly. I think he's talking about, uh, yeah, leaving the job. Thank mm -hmm. you, Russell, for that. I appreciate that. You guys are amazing. I love this. This is so much fun. And we are at the end. I cannot believe it, Julie. My goodness. So before we uh, sign off, though, I do want to give folks the opportunity to connect with you. And what I'd like to do at this moment is basically bring up your website alongside of you and let you discuss anything you want about how to get in touch with you. And it may not be on that website, but if it is, let's do it and talk about your business a little bit before we sign off. Would that be cool with you? Yeah, that's good with me. All right, here we go. There you are. Yeah, that's us. So we want to help other businesses grow their business and make a social impact. And so that's what we are really all about right now. Um, we're working with consumer product e-commerce brands and doing social media marketing as well as PR services for them. So best way to get in touch with us is to go to the website and go to the contact us page. Um, and you can fill out that form and you get to schedule a time actually to talk with me. So you can also call the numbers on the page there as well. And if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can find me. If you Google Julie or if you search for Julie B and Charlotte, you will find me. So my last name is B E E like a bumblebee. And um, as you can see there, B smart social media has two E's in it as well. Fantastic. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from the woman herself. So yes, it's bsmartsocialmedia.com. For those of you watching, you can see that podcast. Write this down. B with two E's, smartsocialmedia.com. All together. Amazing. Julie, you've been a phenomenal, phenomenal guest. Um, I can't tell you how appreciative I am for you spending your evening. I know it's later there than it is where I'm at. It's uh, approaching the 10 o'clock hour where you are. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I just think that you brought an incredible amount of value and I couldn't be more appreciative for of you for doing that. And I hope a lot of people connect with you and contact you, especially those that have currently an e-commerce product uh, where they have a mission behind it to reach out. I mean, you can see what an amazing woman this is. That means everyone in her organization is as amazing as her because she wouldn't have it any other way. You have to have people that are in alignment with your values. And she has that, or she wouldn't have been doing business for 10 solid years. That's, that's quite a run. And that's fantastic. And I can't wait to see even more resounding success for you, Julie, and your whole team and your family. Uh, maybe you can teach me how to paddleboard sometime when you're in California. That would be fun. Uh, but I, I just want to say, I truly appreciate you. And is there any, uh, any parting comments you'd like to leave with our audience? Thanks for watching and just stay resilient, resourceful, and relentless. Oh, I love it. The three R's. That's a great way to end it. All right. Well, on behalf of Julie B., I'm Brian Kelly, host of the Mind Body Business Show. And until next time, we will see you again. Be blessed, everyone. So long. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been the Mind Body Business Show with Brian, Brian Kelly. Kelly.